gonna be doing here is making biochar in a top loading updraft kiln or a T-LUD, which is this barrel. We'll explain more about that in a minute. So what we're gonna fill it with is carbonish materials. Material with a lot of carbon, it's gonna be fairly dry. So we've chosen to use this patch of knotweed. Uh, Japanese knotweed is a horrible invasive here um, in Nova Scotia and many places around the world it has become one of the invasives people are worried about and trying to figure out what can you do with it. So it grows prolifically uh, and it puts out um, this green growth in the summertime and then it dries in the winter. So we're gonna harvest a lot of the dry knotweed. We're gonna bring that knotweed and we're gonna smash it into this barrel where we're gonna burn it. We filled up our kiln, our barrel, uh, with the knotweed, and you can see that we haven't really used that much uh, to fill up this barrel. We filled it up. We've put the top. We've put the more the fine, some of the finer pieces um, to help the, get the fire started. We're going to put a little paper in here, um, and then we're going to light it. Uh, one of the things that we talked about when we were filling it is how important it is to make sure we don't transport the knotweed a long distance because there's seeds on here. We don't want to seed an area that doesn't have an invasive species. So like, if you're gonna do this, you wanna do your burns nearby where you have the knotweed or be very careful if you transport anywhere not to bring the seeds and start new knotweed patches. Um, because this is a use for an invasive species. We don't wanna encourage a nation, an invasive species. So this barrel has a bunch of holes in the bottom. The air is gonna come in through the holes. It's gonna burn inside the barrel, the smoke's going to come out the top, the fire's going to start at the top of the barrel where we light it, it's slowly going to burn down. Everything below the fire is where the air is coming up through, it'll be drawn up through. Everything above the fire is going to be a low oxygen environment, most of the air is going to be burned up by the fire, so everything above that has very little air, and that's where the biochar is being created, is above that fire line. <laughs> We let it burn for about 15 to 20 minutes um, and the reason why I say that is because we burned this barrel before and we know that's what it takes about to finish it uh, but basically we're gonna wait till the fire burns all the way down to the bottom and once it burns all the way down to the bottom on all sides we're gonna then uh, put it out we want a fairly tall chimney and what happens with a taller chimney same as it happens in your house is as the heat kind of moves up it draws the air from underneath so it draws more air in so the taller the chimney you have, the more draw you get, by and large. So if we didn't have any chimney at all, it really wouldn't draw much air and it kind of smolder in there. By putting the chimney on, it really draws that air up. As this chimney heats up, the, the air starts to rush up and it speeds up as it goes to leave out the top. So we're going to want a, a tall chimney um, and the chimney size. We want a fairly large chimney and a lot of holes in the bottom. We're trying to get enough air in and have a really hot burn. But we don't want it to be a colder fire. We want a really hot as we can. You know how you blow on a fire and it like makes the fire get hotter and brighter? The same is true with this. A lot of air coming in the bottom, have a really hot fire in there, and make some really good biochar on top. <laughs> grind it up, smash it up into a powder. That powder we can then add to our soils um, for increased water holding capacity and nutrient holding capacity, really important in gardens. Uh, we can add it to uh, paints and pigments, natural paints for walls that'll help with air quality. Uh, but mostly I use this in gardens 
and I also use it in water filtration so we can smash it up into that powder again and then we can use it to filter uh, some chemicals out of the water, uh, flavor, bad flavors, um, discoloration. So biochar itself has this ama amazing ability to filter out toxins and to hold water and nutrients. Just a note, if you're going to use this in the garden, you want to activate your charcoal. Um, by dousing it with compost tea. Um, some people will use urine, but you wanna uh, fill up those uh, empty spaces in the biochar before you put it into your gardens. And we can talk more about how the, the chemistry works of it uh, and, and what happens with it in another section. But if you're gonna use it in your gardens, you do wanna activate it. And we can talk more about how and what that looks like.